newest edition of our She Speaks series video podcast. I am Catherine Porth, the founder of Let Her Speak. And today I have the amazing Regina Bonds, who is your confidence coach, whether you know that you need one or have one, Regina is your confidence coach. Um, and I am so excited to have her on today. Uh, for those who don't live in the Knoxville area, I mean, Regina is, is kind of a legend in our city. So she um, speaks at a lot of events around the city with a lot of different groups. Um, and she is the wake up call that, that we all need, especially getting out of 2020 in 2021 um, and everything beyond. So thank you so much for being with me today, Regina. Oh my goodness, Catherine. I was not expecting <laughs> that type of introduction. I thought we were just going to go with, you know, she's the confidence coach, but I am so grateful and so, so excited to be with you today. I think it's just, um, you know, it's an honor for me to be on a platform with you and to serve with you. And I'm just so thankful to be here. Well, I likewise, likewise, I, um, for those who don't follow Regina, number one, go to the caption of this video so you can follow Regina on social media because she does lives that you didn't even realize in that moment. You're like, oh shoot, I really needed somebody to help me get my act together right now. I didn't realize how in the, in my head I was at the moment. So, um, to, to start off, Regina, with our conversation, um, mm -hmm. I, I would love for you to share the backstory of, um, it's not like you wake up when you're, you're 10 years old one morning and you're like, you know what, I'm going to be a confidence coach when I get older. Mm -hmm. So I know there was an entire journey that led you to where you are now. Absolutely, Catherine. So for me, it started off with um, actually didn't have very much self-esteem at all growing up. Um, of course, we're born. I, I believe that we're born with confidence is what we do and the environment that we're raised in that kind of um, it, it tears away at that, if you will, in some environments. And, and in my environment, I had a very loving, compassionate family uh, raised in a two parent home and we were a very tight knit community. Um, I lived around family. Every Everybody on my street was either a relative or we called them a relative. And so um, being raised in that type of environment, heavily inundated with the Christian community. So I come from a long stream of pastors. And so with that being said, I, I thought I was doing good as a child, but it was not until I began to get into learning that I found it problematic for me. I had, a, I had a hard time learning and developing and reading. And, you know, when we're small like that, we expect our teachers or it is expected of a teacher to inspire you to dream big and to do great things for your life, even as a child, just to infuse that 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 wisdom to dream in your life and my teacher in this in the second and the third grade i'll never forget um she kind of told me that i'd never be able to read like everybody else and it, it, from that moment on as you can see it's still so vivid in me even now i can remember her face and how she said it and how how much turmoil my parents went through trying to find the right solutions for me they had me in hooked on phonics if anybody can remember oh yeah <laughs> if anybody can remember back in those days we had those little uh those little cassettes that you could put in to learn about, you know, how to how to put words together. So they were just really trying to get me in a place because at that point, because that little small sentence changed the trajectory of my life because I just didn't believe I was good enough. From then on, everything that I did streamed from you'll never be like everybody else. You're never going to be good enough. Just get in where you can fit in right? How many of us go through that in our lives where we're just, someone has said something to us, you know, that saying when we were small, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is a bold face lie. <laughs> they do hurt. And I, I, I lived my life from that place. But long story short, leading on up into my adulthood, um, my life kind of projected from that place of not being good enough. I ended up having a child at 19 years old 
and my mother died shortly after. And so my world was just completely discombobulated. I, I was really in a place where, wow, what's going on with me? I never thought I'd had a child right out of high school. I never thought my mother would pass away. She was such a staple in my life and it really broke me down. And I had to get up off that ground and ask myself, who do I want to be? Because who I was was gone. My mother was my everything. And she, when, when, when my teacher would speak those things over me, she was the one who believed in me. Um, and so with that being said, I really learned, had to pick up the pieces and ask myself, okay, I don't like who I am right now. Who do I want to be? And who I wanted to be at the time was someone who represents hope someone who represents that you don't have to be a product of your environment, that you can create your own reality through the power of your spoken words and your thoughts. And through that came confidence. So I ended up going to college and studied uh, psychology life coaching for four years and then got a master's in women's counseling with the focus on, um, with the focus on personal uh, development. And so it, it just all panned out for me to really streamline and believe that I can, that you can do anything with your life. I'm a living proof of that because truth be told, I probably should be working in, in a small town with a community that's just like me and my family are streamlined together, but I didn't let that be my story. I decided to create something new for myself and I'm so proud of myself for doing that. And I want every other woman to know that they can create their own story as well. I love that. I, I feel like most women that that I've either interacted with and talked with through Let Her Speak or um, know their stories from from other outlets. It seems like we we all have our own Phoenix story mm -hmm. of of, you know, right, there was an ashes of our life surrounding us and we could have either stayed in the ashes or we could have risen up and and reinvent who we know that we were and who we are. Um, and so I love hearing everyone's Phoenix story. Um, and so that's, it's such a powerful story and something that, that nobody else, um, cause I know you talk about that. Nobody can be and bring what you bring. Nobody no. else can be you. Um, right. and I think it's that Phoenix story is a big part of it. That's a beautiful way to put it. I never thought of it being a Phoenix story, but now that you say that, you know, it's definitely, we all have our Phoenix moment. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, talk a little bit about, um, so it's been, what has it been three years now since you started um, coaching? Yeah, full-time coaching has been about, well, when I really decided to put myself out there, it's been about three years. I kind of dibbled and dabbled in it for, I would say about six or seven years, but solid, it's been about three years. Mm -hmm. So how has that journey looked, um, especially for those that, that have dabbled in, and been doing that, um, what, whatever their side thing is, I mean, what did that transition really look like and, and what made you officially take that leap? You know, I felt honestly like I was suffocating and I felt like I was stuck inside of my own my own body i felt trapped and and trapped by no one but myself honestly um because i was whispering that this is this is who i am you know i was whispering out this is who i am and i was wondering why people were not gravitating to me and why 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 won't they work with me and it was because i was whispering no one could hear me i was hiding in plain sight and there are so many of us in this world today who instead of showing up for who we want to be in this world to call forth our rise and be unapologetic about who we've been called to be we instead because we don't know if we're worth it or we're valuable enough or people will receive us we get inside of our own head we get that sneaking thinking going on and we start we decide that we're going to just maybe whisper it out and see how people take it but if you're going to make a bold move such as moving in the lane um and, and being fully embracing who you are you've got to stand up and and yell it out this is who i am and whether people like it or not, it does not matter. But the, the main goal is for you to be secure and confident in who you decide to be in the world. And so it looked very scary. It was unknown to me how to do this. And I think I was even look, looking at a Facebook memory. Don't we love those Facebook memories? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes I, it's more because I don't journal. That is actually my main way of like looking back on things. <laughs> I was looking back and a memory actually came up 
yesterday and it was where I was like doing a little video and that was right around the time where I was dibbling and dabbling in it. and I made a beautiful video right but I looked at that video hindsight and I didn't know that girl didn't know what she wanted she didn't know what she was gonna how this was gonna play out she didn't know the how all she had was a dream you know, all she had was a dream and she just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And who I am today is light years ahead of her, but it took the uncomfortableness. It took the season of not knowing the next step. It took living in uncertainty to really establish me as a leader to say, if I can walk through the valley per se and not know how I'm gonna come out on top and make it through that, than anybody can. And so it just it's just that you have to be willing to take the risk, take the risk on yourself and you have to be curious. Sometimes we live in fear, but I would like to in inspire women to split the sphere and turn it into curiosity. Hmm, I wonder what my life would be, be like if I tried. And that kind of takes the pressure off of everything being so risky. You can give it a try. And so that's what I decided to do was I decided to bet on Regina and it worked. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, who would have thought betting on yourself and give, giving yourself accountability and reframing can make all the difference in the world? <laughs> yeah. And also community. I mean, you know, community helps for any person who's thinking about taking the leap into entrepreneurship or pursuing their dreams, get with some women who are like-minded. I am so thankful for my Knoxville community, the women in entrepreneurship um, community, shameless plug there, <laughs> because those women there, you know, including you, Catherine, we just have such a great bond. And when we go in that community, we have resources, we can ask questions, and we don't feel alone. And so I would say to anyone who's thinking about stepping out or, or taking the leap, get with community so that you can have the right support system to get you uh, where you want to be. And I know I love the story of um, how you met Bailey, because you, because um, Bailey, um, I know really helped you, especially in the beginning with social media and um, just br overall brand, correct? She had, well, she came on as an assistant. So I put out, an, I actually put out something in our women in entrepreneurship group for an assistant. And she responded and I met with her. It was, it was, uh, yeah, we met. And then she kind of like became, all things like she was she was into social media she was into brand and she was into photography she could take the right pictures to know how to you know get it across the social media and she really helped me and I would say I thought she was coming on as an assistant but in all actuality she ended up being so much more to me and now I consider her just like my baby sister or even like my daughter <laughs> because she's just been such a positive impact in my life and I love her dearly for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's one thing that when you're a solopreneur stepping out, the the finding community, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then also using that community and actually asking for what you need too. Because I mean, if you had been quiet in the wings of looking for someone and not outwardly saying, hey, I need this, who can help me? Um, who knows? You probably, you might not have ever found Bailey. I pro I'm sure I wouldn't because I go back to, um, you know, the conference that I, I, was it the conference or we had some type of event with you where you gave us these personality uh, sheets yeah. and we talked about being a perfectionist and all different types of things. But one of the things that I found in there is that because I believe that I do it best, I don't always ask for help. But because I was with a community who people just were always putting out, I need this, who can do this? I was like, well, why not let me ask? They encouraged me to start asking for what I needed. And as a result of me asking, I ended up getting more than I ever thought I would ever, ever get. Yeah, I think that's a really important part too of community is the people not being afraid to to speak and say something. I mean, sometimes in a uh, an online conversation, it takes the first commenter to really get the conversation going not the actual poster yeah yeah absolutely yeah I that. 
Um, so one question um, I wanted to ask you too is, um, so we talk about confidence and I, I feel like a lot of people have different interpretations and different thoughts of what confidence is. So what does confidence mean to you? That's actually a really great question. And it's funny that you positioned it the way you did because a lot of people have different definitions of confidence. You know, some people believe it's how you walk in the room and, you know, you get everybody's attention. And, and while that may be on the surface level, what people perceive confidence is, I think it's much deeper than that. I think for me, what I teach and what I subscribe to is that, you know, confidence is about building an inner guidance system that is full of self-love and self-acceptance um, and that produces trust and certainty within self and, and then that brings about a a way if you will a vehicle confidence is then used as a vehicle a luxury vehicle i say to get you from where you are to where you want to be and fast it's all about that inner guidance system it's all about believing in yourself it's all about going inside so that you'll never go without you know i say that often when you learn to go within you'll never go without and it's true confidence about is about how you speak to yourself how you how what do, dialogue are you having with self how do you support yourself how do you treat yourself and as a result of loving yourself of checking in with yourself of accepting who you are of accepting your dreams and every aspect of you then you can build a system with inside of self that says you know what i can do that i can try that i can't i can have the strength and the willpower and the confidence the trust ultimately to trust myself to try things and not be afraid you know, that's mm -hmm. what confidence is to me. It's all about building that inner guidance system that says, I love myself enough that I won't sit on the sidelines of life, but I'll give life all that I have. It's all about making that dash between your date of birth and your end date mean something. <laughs> I, always, I always love that quote. That's a good yeah. <laughs> Um, So the question then I have is, um, so there's a lot of us that have, um, we've been around toxicity for so long that, that, like you said, we were born with confidence and maybe we had it. We were so strongly, firmly believed in ourselves, but then we started inviting people in and didn't realize the toxicity of what they were chipping away at us until, um, I mean, what are, what are some, ways or some pieces that you usually share with people of how to bring yourself back after that? Wow, that's such a great question. Uh, you know, like, like, like you just stated, we do come into this world with confidence. And I, my first example is when I'm talking to a client, I say, you know, go back to like looking at a baby. You know, now when we're adults, we're, we're checking our arms to see if they've gained weight. We're checking our stomach to see if they gain weight. But when you go look at a baby, they, they, they relish in their chubby arms and their chubby stomach and their, their, their legs with the three rolls on them. You know, they, they love that. They, you know, they, they have no shame about themselves. And it's not until we start getting influenced by the world and by those who are in our environments that kind of nicks away us, at us. And honestly, as a child, there's really nothing that you can do about it. You can't help who brought you into this world or who you were surrounded with. But as an adult, it is your responsibility to decide for yourself, number one, that I have to create a system with inside of self that supports me. And if the thoughts that I've been thinking up until this point doesn't support where I want to go. If I don't like the results I'm seeing in my life, number one, I've got to start changing the way I think. How do I change the way I think? I start by repetition. I believe that repetition is the key to mastery. And what does that look like? That looks like every day you creating some type of routine that supports some I am statements that you can speak over yourself and speak over your life. Until, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to believe it up front. You know, you can say I'm rich all day long and not believe it, but through repetition, if you keep going in the gym and working out that I am statement, eventually you're going to see a bicep, you're going to see a tricep, you're going to see some abs. And so it takes you manually going inside of your internal system, your mindset and reprogramming yourself, having a paradigm shift where you say, I'm going to take what doesn't work out 
because I don't like my results, because I understand that what I radiate out, I get back. I don't like the results. So I got to change my mindset, change the way I've been thinking, change my thoughts so that it can produce a different result in my life. So I think the number one thing to kind of redirect yourself and get yourself in that place where you actually do feel good about yourself and you elevate to that realm of unstoppable confidence is through your thought life and gaining control of the thoughts that you have. I really do think that's where it starts. Yeah, I think that is something that in in practice, it's so difficult. Consistency mm. is so difficult um, because you know we we think of things sometimes in goals as years or five years, ten years. We don't think of them in terms of in this very minute, am I doing something that will help me? You know, in that goal, and it's like every sixty seconds is an opportunity to every to be consistent. Seconds. Yeah. Oh. That's such a good point. That is such a good point. And to that, that brings me to Catherine, like living in the moment, you know, sometimes we're, we're looking so far ahead that we don't take advantage of being intentional in the moment. And it's not the years that make the change. It's what you do moment by moment. And also that takes the pressure off of you. Because if you would just say, what can I do in this moment? Instead of always thinking about what can I do in the next five years? then little by little, you're going to see little improvements that make you want to keep going, you know, make you want to keep trying, make you want to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So it's all about those moments that we really take the time to say, what can I do right here and right now that will influence my future for the better? I agree. And, and I think sometimes, uh, you know, people think that it has to be big audacious oh. acts that they're doing. It, it's not, um, I mean, I can say yesterday was supposed to be my last day off and I ended up working part of the day, but mm -hmm. I watched Oceans 8 in the morning and I was like, this is what I need right now in order to achieve what I want to achieve the rest of today <laughs> is I need to sit down and just watch a girl's heist movie. <laughs> yes, I love that movie. Uh, but you, I'm going to be honest with you. I have, I, I got some work to do in that area of relaxing. For some reason, to me, it's like, you know, should I take a break or should, and, and when I worked in corporate, we got breaks, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But sometimes within this entrepreneurial journey, because I'm, you, you, it's a process. And so sometimes I'm like, I want to sit down and watch TV, but then I'll end up working way past when I said I was going to stop. So you really have to, I, I encourage moments like that. I mean, I'm trying to get on your level where I can just in the morning say, I'm going to watch me a movie. <laughs> I mean, the entire time in the back of my mind was like, I need to be getting this done. I need to, I should be working on this. And then it's like, wait, you told yourself you were taking today off. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So it's, yeah. It, no, I definitely guilt trip myself. And then I have to tell myself, stop guilting yourself. <laughs> right. Like, why do we do that? We, we work our butts off, you know, we're always doing something. And when you're an entrepreneur, you are working, even when you get ready to go to bed at night, you're like, Ooh, that idea. Oh, that's got to be done. This has got to be. And so why do like, why do we guilt ourselves into feeling like we can't have that moment where we watch the movie, you know, where we go and, you know, do what we need to go to the skating ring or whatever you it is that that is your it. But that's a real question for me. Why do we perceive that we have to just always stay in work mode? Yeah, I, I am trying to figure that out too, because it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know if it got ingrained in me at some point, but it's like, I have this passion and every moment of my life should be in service of this passion. Yeah. <laughs> when, when it's like my, my primary passion I know should be, am I happy? Right. Not what am I doing to make others happy? Um, and I feel like I, I'm, I'm not very good at doing that personally either. I'm working on it. I'm yeah. working. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day, maybe end of 2021 will help. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to, um, we need to talk to our uh, board about maybe that being a topic this year for our meetings because for our women in entrepreneurship meetings, because that's so, it's so big for a lot of us. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I think, I don't know a single entrepreneur who doesn't struggle with that yeah, I don't at either. some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not healthy. Um, and so, uh, you know, another question, so you have the, you have the three C formula 
for mm -hmm. massive confidence. Um, but, and then you also have the 77.7. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I'd love for you to explain both of those. Okay. I've never had somebody ask me to explain outside of my community. Um, you know, what does that 77, 77.7 uh, .7 mean? Um, and it's basically, I teach my students and my clients that there are two ends of the spectrum that you can live on. Basically, you can live on the positive side of life or you can live on the negative side of life. And I turned it into a radio station to give them, a, the, to give them something, a symbol that they could kind of gauge what I was talking about and learn about it in a way that really made sense to them. I said, imagine you have a radio station and, you know, your favorite station, you know, here in, in Knoxville, I love 104.7, I believe, you know, because I love a little music where I can kind of jam to and move to. I love, you know, I love to dance. And so when I'm on that station, I feel good. You know, I'm, I'm moving, I'm bopping. Every, people are looking at me in my car and they're like, who is this girl? You know, I'm feeling myself. And then you have this other radio station. Imagine turning on an AM station that's staticky. You can't hear anything or either it's music that you don't like. And you're like, oh my God, what is really going on in the station? And you don't feel it. It's not a vibe for you. And so I broke that down to them and, and basically we separated it. What side of life do you want to live on? Do you want to live on that that radio station that's full of static, that's not clear, that that doesn't make you feel good? And we named that 66.6. .6. You know, people hate sixes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> and then we named the station 77.7 um, .7 .7 is the positive side of life when you're tuned in, tapped in, and turned on to all things are possible. It's the quantum field where all things exist. And so you've got, there's a certain way you act. There's a certain way you handle yourself. There's a certain way you live when you're in that realm of 77.7. .7. Certain things can't touch you anymore. Certain things can't stop you anymore because you're living from a place of positivity. And so okay. that's sort of kind of what that 77.7 .7 means. And we also break down, like, let's not be real unrealistic. We know sometimes that that radio station is maybe going to fluctuate and you're going to get a little static because you're on a journey, right? You're driving. What work, That station I love in Knoxville may not work in Virginia where I'm from. It's a, it's a different station. So we know that you're on your journey and sometimes you may be kicked off of 77.7. .7. But there's a system that we use that you can always, we call it a rampage, or you can always work your way back to the positive state of being where you can have an inner conversation and say, you know, say for instance, your car blows out on the road and you're in that 66.6 .6 type of vibe and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened to me. You know, you're going on and on and on, but you can work your way out of that into the place of positivity by saying it could have been worse. You know, I could have lost my life. I could have lost that tire and went off the side of the rail and my car could have fumbled until I, I could have lost consciousness. I could have passed away. But thankfully, this is all that happens. And I choose to be happy and thankful that I'm still living. That's kind of how we work our way back in any situation to living in that realm of unstoppable stoppable confidence, which is 77.7. .7. Okay. Okay. I get it now. Cause I always thought, well, sevens are really lucky number anyways. Yes. So yes. I figured yes. maybe there was something like that too. Okay. It's that too. We, we pick sevens because, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, seven means completion. Seven means perfection. Seven means complete. So we pick that too, because we wanted to live in that state where we know that all things are working out for us truly. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes sense. And plus seven, I mean, if you really want to take it a little further is, you know, seven pH is a perfect balance between acid and base too. So oh, I love that. Ah, I need to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we need to drink more water. So there's, you know, <laughs> multiples of that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then what, if, so then you have the three C's. Yeah. The three C's. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. So the confidence formula is simple. I believe in order for anyone to have massive confidence, they must first have clarity, courage, and commitment. You have to have the clarity to see what you want because I believe that if it cannot be explained, it will never be obtained. 
you got to be clear about what you want in life in order to walk in confidence. You know, I, I say, prof, like when you want to be profitable, profitability likes clarity. It likes for you to be strategic about what do I, how much do I need to make today to get to my monthly goal? And how much do I need to make my monthly to get to my yearly goal? Profitability likes clarity. Your dream likes clarity. It likes intentionality. It likes for you to wake up every day and take a step by step by step by step to get you to that place you want to be. So I definitely think that everybody needs to be clear on what they want out of life and be intentional about being that thing that they want, not just wanting it, but becoming the thing before they see the thing. So that clarity and then that, that courage, you got to be able to do it afraid. <laughs> You really do. You really have to be able to do it afraid. And that's where that curiosity comes in. Taking fear and turning it into curiosity. What if I do it? What if, what if I tried it? What if I gave it a chance? And having that curiosity will help you be courageous with inside of your limits where you're not out there just willy-nilly trying everything, but you're able to have the courage to really go after what you want in life. And so courage is so vital to an entrepreneur or to women who really, really, really want to live life on their own terms. You have to be courageous. Um, and then commitment. Oh, let's talk about it. Commitment, commitment, commitment. We have to be committed to ourselves and to our goals, to our desires, but most importantly, ourselves. We can't wake up one day and want to do it. And then the next day we don't. We can't we can't say we want something and not be committed to seeing it through, even in the moments, even in the messy middle, I like to say. You know, we start real good, you know, and we know the ending's going to be beautiful, but the messy middle is where you got to stick with it and you got to stay committed to your goals, stay committed to your dreams, stay committed to yourself because commitment will pay off. And I say when you mix clarity, courage, and commitment, you will run right into the loving arms of confidence. And where confidence flows, cash flow goes. <laughs> so that's kind of how I position my confidence formula. <laughs> ah, yeah, and I, I completely get the, um, with the commitment, um, you know, it's a little bit like the hero's journey of you start going into the belly of the beast that you're fighting and you're in the trenches of, of whatever it is. Um, and it's getting out to that other side of the, the basically rebirth of the, of your own hero story. Um, and the, yeah, it's that messy middle that seems like all is lost and I don't know what, what to do. It seems like that messy middle, let's just be honest. I, I teach, but the one thing that I'm grateful for about my experience and teaching my clients and the, and the people who are attracted to my business is I'm able to be vulnerable and honest. I don't teach from a place of I have it all together. I teach from a place of authenticity that says, I have these moments, you know? I have moments where I have to be courageous because I'm afraid. I have moments where I have to, you know, get myself back in line because it's the messy middle and what's gonna happen? I'm uncertain, you know? And I get frustrated and I get maybe a little anxious, but I have to remember to ground myself in who I know that I am and know that I really can be all things and do all things. It's really all up to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, um, I so I talk a lot of, um, I guess more so uh, in my conversations privately about the transition of fear into curiosity. Um, as it relates to like getting to know people that you wouldn't necessarily, you think that you would be at odds with this person. Um, and I always feel like that is a, a nugget of something that a lot of people struggle with is approaching someone who doesn't agree with you or look like you or think like you from instead of a place of, I'm afraid of who this person is to, I am curious as to why this person thinks this way and, and what their background and their story is. Oh, Catherine, you just said a mouth full. You know, I remember being that rigid where I just would, I wasn't open to people and I, I didn't want to look at a different perspective, you know, because of, and I, you know, I'm not going to blame it on anybody, but I think the background that I came up in, you know, we were, we were hardcore Christians, you know, and, you know, you, you act a certain way and you dress a certain way and you got to be a certain way and you got to quote these scriptures and all this type of thing. But when I go out into the world, let's just be honest, we're not all Christians. We're not, all, you know, we're not all walking the same journey. 
And if I'm really supposed to operate in that love that I say that I'm going to operate in, I've got to be open to hearing everyone's story. And they didn't come from where I came from. I didn't come from where they came from. What would happen if the world just became more compassionate and just was a little bit more curious about other people and be open to hearing their side of their story? We would be a totally different world. Oh, I 100% agree. <laughs> that is that is always the whenever you know news breaks out of something that uh, especially it seems like you know 2020 really ran that lack of compassion and oh, fear. I mean, it just ramped it up or or brought it to the surface at least. It really did. Yeah, and and instead coming from a place of of curiosity instead of judgment and ridicule, um, I think 2020 could have turned out to be a lot different type of year. I would have to agree. I would have to agree. People fear the unknown. And, and when you're raised a certain way and you're brought up a certain way, and we all come from these different backgrounds, you just are fearful of, of other people's perspective. And how could I be wrong? You know, how could, how could, what if what I believe is wrong, you know, and we, we get in that place where we got to hold on, we're fighting for our limitations. And when we open our heart and really experience the world for the beautiful place that it is, you know, we will begin to see people in a new way and in a more compassionate way. And we will all be a better, we will all be, we'll be a better people. Humanity will be better because of it. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, so going back to your, your community and the groups of women and individuals that you've, that you've worked with, are there any, um, obviously you don't need to name names or anything, but are there any particular stories that have really stuck with you and, and really, um, you know, made you continue to do what you do? Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> there is so many stories of, I think every woman, I, because I take my job so serious, I care so much. I care so deeply for women in general. I think every woman that I have had the chance to work with, just, just seeing them from where they start. I love watching women from when they start with me and then when they when their journey is up with me. And some of them, I can't get rid of them. They just keep going and going and going. <laughs> and I love that too. But to see them from where they start and where they end, it's just, it's like a miracle. It's like watching a miracle happen right before my eyes. It's like literally being able to watch the butterfly go through that those different stages until it develops into the butterfly that it is. And so every woman, that I've worked with I've been able to I've had no bad experiences honestly and I, I pray that it stays that way but um you know but I think all of my ladies have really made a positive impact in my life if there was one that actually stuck out to me it would be a young lady who um experienced you know her I, I'm still kind of working with her now but uh, we were working together to build business and to gain confidence and to speak up for what she wanted. And she wanted to start speaking and things like that and get into different sectors of business. But she was really struggling with confidence and she ended up in the process of us working together. Um, she lost her daughter uh, in the process of that. And to see her willingness to grieve and still keep going she still wanted to show up for her one-on-ones. She still wanted to show up and, you know, learn and get better. That took my confidence up because honestly, for me, if I'm thinking about putting myself in her shoes, I have a son. What if I lose my son? You know, I'm thinking of like that in terms of that. I don't know if I would be able to get out of bed. You know, I don't know if I would be able to face life, but to see her tenacity, to see her strength, to be able to go through what she go through, go through is going through and still be able to keep going. And she still, she still took her grieving process, but she still works with me and we still work together and she was committed to her dream. It just made me wanna say, okay, there's really nothing we as women can't do nothing. Yep. I agree. And, and I know you and I both share a love of, of just women kind oh, in general. Yeah. I, what, I, and I've had this question asked to me, so I'm, I'll ask you, but what do you love most about being a woman? Oh, 
gosh, that is, oh my goodness. Girl, you asking some good questions. <laughs> um, what do I love most about being a woman? I, I would say I love our hearts. Like under, even, you can give me the worst woman you've ever met. Bad attitude, you know, catty. If you take that layer off, keep peeling back those layers. Underneath those layers is a beautiful heart of a woman who truly just wants to love and be loved. I love the heart of a woman. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, some of the most, you know, uh, metaphorically ugly women, they still have at least one person who is like a, a ride or die. I will do anything for that person more than likely in their life. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the fact that we are so loyal to it, to at least the people that are our people. Um, oh, we are loyal. <laughs> when it hurts, we're loyal. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, so the, the last question, and this will probably be a thinker, but I, um, you kind of answered it when we featured you for the, the She Seeks post is mm -hmm. what is at the end of the day, what is the legacy that you hope you leave behind? I mean, how do you hope people will think of you and describe you? Whew. When I leave this earth, I want to leave empty. And I want my legacy to be, you have, I want, I want to leave a legacy of, people remembering me by knowing that if you would really tap into the power in you that literally creates worlds there's a power in you that literally creates worlds if you would tap into that power there was absolutely nothing that you cannot be do or have that's what I want people to know I want people to believe in themselves and to know that really we are the highest form of creation and there's nothing that we cannot be to or have. I love that. I feel like that, that could be a quote too in like your, um, oh, you know, in the eulogy or the obituary or something yeah. too. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so for everybody who wants to, to work with you and, and see the programs that you offer and the work that you do, um, you know, what are, do you have things that are coming up or what are the best ways for people to connect with you? Yeah. So um, right now we're doing the 21 day confidence challenge. Um, and we do those periodically throughout the month. But the best place to find out what I have going on is to make sure that you stay connected with me um, in one of three places. You can find me on my website, www.reginabonds.com. Uh, that, that has a list of services that I offer. Also, Instagram is my jam. Okay. <laughs> so you can always find me on Instagram at Regina K. Bonds. Uh, I, I talk about all things there in my store. I live in my stories and on Facebook, Regina Bonds, the confidence coach or Regina K. Bonds. Um, and I always give an insightful list of what I have going on for the month or for the year. I do a lot of work. Now my new love, my new baby is helping, helping newer life coaches become and get out there. Maybe the ones who haven't started yet, but they know they have that gift and desire to help people. I love to help those women establish a successful uh, coaching business. So that's my new baby. I also do mentorship, one-on-ones, VIP days, and I love women in business. So we talk about strategy, not so much the foundational steps, like how to get your EIN and things like that. You can go to Catherine or Shameless Club Booth, Andrews, <laughs> you know, but you can go to, you know, though you can go there. We got some amazing experts inside our group for that. But for me, I, I live in the dream of it. What's your big dream with it? And I like to help you materialize that aspect of business. And so those are the things that I got going on. And I, I'm looking forward to a beautiful 2021. It's going to be an explosive year. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know if anyone's ever mentioned this to you, but I feel like if you just got on TikTok one time a day and did your confidence minute, you know, on, on TikTok, I just feel like there are so many young people out there that would love to just get that 60 second boost from, from Regina every day. <laughs> I'm not going to have to look into that. My son tells me that I need to get on there, but you know, I, I feel
feel like, even though I'm a millennial, I feel like I'm getting on that that side, and I don't want to be, I need to really work on this, that side of life where, you know, you're stuck in your ways. <laughs> I've got Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. And th the main reason <laughs> I say that is like a lot of your stories could easily be a TikTok. Yeah, I'm going to definitely, yeah. I'm going to take your, um, your opinion and your advice and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. Yeah, I, at least, um, so for those of you who, um, may not know, Regina served on the board for the Junior Achievement Miss Business in 2020. Um, and I'm assuming you'll be helping out again this year, but, um, but she did uh, confidence minutes, right? You did a couple of them sprinkled throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of the, the girls that attended that were all you know, high school age. So people who are on TikTok for the right. most part, and they just absolutely loved it. I mean, every time you came on, there was the chat was just going crazy of girls saying how much they, they loved hearing from you. So I just feel like you're already doing it. You just need to post it and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I just need to get out of my comfortability and, and get outside of the box and post it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Be curious. Be, Be curious. curious. Be curious. That's what, that's how, you know what, that's the word for 2021 for somebody. Be curious. Yeah, Be that's true. That's true. I love, I am a, I am a curiosity fanatic. So I love it. <laughs> I'm learning to be more curious, especially in, in life and in relationships. We could talk about that offline, but girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and your words and your wisdom today, Regina. You are so welcome, Catherine. And thank you for the opportunity. You know, I believe in my heart of hearts that your gift the movement inside of you is so needed and necessary. And there are women all over the world who are looking for a Catherine to inspire them and encourage them to use their voice and speak up. Well, thank you so much. That means a lot. <laughs>